when we have a reversal and we stocks to re kind of reclaim, it's like the old heavy D song, right? Now that we found love, what are we going to do, right? The bulls found love. What are you going to do with it, right? Don't drop the ball, guys. Don't drop the ball. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of the AccessTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. All right, so before we get started, obviously, guys, thank you very much for all your uh, viewership. You're spending 15 minutes of your day uh, with us uh, when we try to navigate uh, through the daily grenades, uh, missile launchers, and all that stuff that makes up uh, this wonderful journey called uh, the stock market. So let's rewind, right? Let's rewind. Let's let's rewind. So we got below the 50-day moving average two days ago. Yesterday, for whatever godforsaken reason, the market decided to rally. We reclaimed back the 50-day moving average yesterday. This morning, right? This morning, you woke up. Uh, Fitch warned that they might downgrade dozens of banks. Uh, every single bank got hit today. JP Morgan, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, uh, Citibank, you know, whatever it is, they all got hit. This time around, the queues did not recover, right? They did not recover, and not only did they not were able to uh, get above yesterday's channel, they lost back the 50-day moving average again. And now this becomes, well, let's see if they could finally get through yesterday, tomorrow, uh, yesterday's channel. And it's going to be a very, very important day. Um, like I said last night's video, I, I anticipated... Even in 2022, when they were trying to fight over control over the 50-day, like I said in last night's video, you know, during that time, it felt like we went over and under the 50-day moving average 300 times before uh, the Bears finally seized control. Uh, that's kind of that's kind of how it's playing out right now. Okay, uh, you got number one the Fitch warning of the downgrade for the credit ratings for the banks. That's obviously not a good thing. Uh, you saw yesterday's channels uh, almost getting engulfed. Not quite, but almost getting engulfed. And now the question is, well, what happens tomorrow? Okay. Let me just say, let me let me just say this much. Okay. There's a lot of names that look like they're about to fall off a cliff, obviously, right? Uh, there's a lot of names that are starting to get a lot of good option flow uh, in that direction. Again, we'll go over uh, one specific name. Uh, as you guys could possibly guess what that is, only my favorite stock. Um, but more important is we're very, very getting close to teetering, right? And that's exactly, if you go back into 2022, that's exactly what happened. We were teetering, right? We were absolutely teetering before we literally fell off a cliff. It didn't happen in one day, but it was a 31% move. So like I said in last night's video, right? Last night's video, and I ended the video, now that we found love, what are we going to do, right? The heavy D song with it. They dropped the ball. The Bulls completely dropped the ball. Uh, there really wasn't any attempt today to rally. Uh, any names that were, any names that were uh, strong yesterday, a couple did follow through today. If you guys remember on last night's video, uh, we talked about Roku. Actually, Roku had a nice pop. Roku had a, a dollar and change pop. It actually held up for the day. Uh, AAOI that we covered last night in the video. Uh, got through this $15 level, went up a dollar. So there was definitely some names that, you know, did very, very well. And the video that we talked about uh, last, you know, last night had a day two run, uh, day two run above the opening range highs. That was pretty good. But when you look at the balance of everything else that's going on right now, you're getting a lot of winners yesterday that gave back their whole day today. And that's not a good thing. I want to talk about, again, I want to talk about the clear levels going into tomorrow's session. Again, I would be very, very stunned, okay, that's the best way of saying it, if we rallied again. Would it shock me? No, but I would be stunned, right? If you have an opinion gun to the head based on today's close, based on how we're sitting at the bottom of the range, I will be stunned, right? If we go back and start rallying again tomorrow. Again, everything is possible. Everything's on the table. And like I say uh, all the time, anything is possible. Everything is possible. We try to make a game plan 
for the next day, right? Does it play out that way? We don't know. That's why we can't speak in definitives. We can speak in definites. We can't speak of easy money. And I knew it. If you knew it and it was easy money, you should have, you should have went size, maxed everything on one side of the market. We don't know that. Okay. But we do know is this. So let's look at the spies first, right? We're going to look at the spies first. So the spies, this is the first close below. This is the first close below the 50 day moving average. We know that, right? Guys, watch tomorrow. If the spies start losing 442, right? If they start losing 442 and especially close below 442 on the bell, it's going to open up a big, big Pandora's box. Okay. That's a big level tomorrow, 442. The QQQs didn't quite take out the last two days of range, but we're not that far. Watch the Qs tomorrow. As you can see here, it stopped twice at the same level. You see that, guys, at the bottom of the range? It stopped twice at 364.70 back to back days. Although we didn't test that level today, but it stopped at back to back levels at uh, 364.70. If that 364.70 finally gets gets taken over and the bears start building below uh, that area, then we can get a very, very aggressive flush. And when you do your chart work tonight, right? When you do your chart work, there's a lot of names like just are mirroring the cues, mirroring the spies. Again, keep this in mind. The spies are represented uh, a lot by the banks, right? When you look at Citibank, when you look at, you know, Citibank, uh, and JP Morgan, they're all representation of the spies. So if this if the banks have if the banks have a day two, right? If they have a day two worth of selling, that's gonna drag the spies. And if you look at names that are commingling between the Qs and the spies, for example, like a Tesla, and let's kind of talk about Tesla for a second, right? So Tesla broke down. If you guys remember, it broke down here two weeks ago below the 50-day moving average. And now it's just going lower. And this is the whole close in this whole formation. Today, we saw a lot of really aggressive put buying come in, okay? We didn't see a lot of names with very, very aggressive put buying, but we started seeing very, very specific names with, with deep out of the money, uh, short-term expiration puts. The whole afternoon today, guys, we saw uh, 225, 220 puts, for, for Friday's expiration. And they were coming in pretty aggressively one after another after another. Is there news? Whatever the case may be. But I'm telling you, if Tesla starts losing this 231 level, you see this whole ch channel here, guys? If Tesla starts losing this 231 level, then you have a bigger gap here coming into 225 and then the 220, and that would correlate with the options market betting in that direction. We'll see, right? We'll see. We don't know what's going on, but the most important part is it got rejected today off the five-day moving average, continues to build below the 50-day moving average. Again, kind of a reference point how important uh, the 50-day moving average is. And the most important is if they can get below uh, this bottom channel here, Tesla could really start opening up just the same way as the spies or the same way uh, as the Qs have potential. Also keep an eye on tomorrow for potential uh, for potential earnings low setups, okay? Uh, earnings low setups are probably one of my favorite uh, swing trading type of scenarios to put on risk because what that is, is basically a stock blows up in earnings, right? A stock blows up in earnings. And once they com confirm their earnings low, they just start drifting for weeks and weeks and weeks. I'll give you, give, give you a perfect example, right? So Square blew up on earnings, right? You see that? Square blew up on earnings, uh, put in a low of 63.20. It danced around a little bit. Once it finally closed below the 63.20, yada, 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 here we are at 58, right? Uh, we started shorting Snapchat yesterday, right? Same play, same play, same premise. We started shorting Snapchat yesterday. It got below the earnings low in the 990s, stock closed today in the 950s. I think in the next couple of days, especially if the market gets pulled, uh, there's a shot it gets down to this $9 area. We'll see. We'll see. But let me give you guys a couple names to watch. And again, they don't necessarily have to be uh, triggered tomorrow, but definitely keep an eye on them for the next couple of days. Here's a couple of names uh, that blew up on earnings that potentially could get hit if they confirm earnings lows in the next several days. Uh, look at DOCN, right? Look, this is just a matter of time. Look at DOCN. Had a nasty, nasty quarter. And now it's just going sideways. Everybody see that, guys? It's going sideways. Once DOCN starts taking out uh, the earnings lows, it should start mirroring square, mirroring square, 
it should start mirroring uh, mirroring uh, Snapchat. So I'm definitely watching this thing in the next couple of days. Uh, also Roblox, you know, look at a name like Roblox as well, right? Same thing. Roblox had a disgusting quarter. It gapped down, you know, again, maybe it confirms tomorrow, maybe it doesn't, but this is something we definitely have to keep on our radar uh, for the next couple of days. And if Roblox starts losing the bottom channel here of the earnings lows, it can get hit as well. So it's very, very uh, important to watch. Other than that, you know, watch the names, you know, watch names in case they pull tomorrow. Uh, Netflix holding on to the 100 day. Uh, look at Apple, right? Apple is also holding on to dear life here. If it starts losing the bottom of the channel here in the next couple of days, it can get hit as well. And look at Mara, right? Look at Mara. Mara is not even the first time uh, we talked about this. First time we talked about it when it lost the 20 day moving average. Today, it lost the 50 day moving average, right? There's the common theme all over again. So if Mara starts confirming today's channel, maybe gets hit as well. So tomorrow, guys, again, let's run this back. Okay, the same video where we talked about on Monday, potentially confirming the 50-day moving average. Well, let's have that conversation again. All I had to do is basically hit a uh, repeat or rewind of Monday's uh, Monday's video, or was it, excuse me, Friday's video, uh, and we have the same premise going into tomorrow's session. Very, very important session, guys. Uh, watch the spies. If they confirm the 50-day, not good. Watch the cues. If they confirm the 50-day, not good. But this is now day two out of the last three days below the 50-day moving average. And all it needs to do is clear out the 100, the last couple of days of ranges for potential more downside. Is it possible to market rallies tomorrow? Everything is possible. It's August in New Jersey. The weather sucks. It's like 60 degrees, 70 degrees. I've never seen, so anything is possible, right? What was the last time you saw a summer like this, that it rains every single day, that it's in the 70s? I think we had one 90 degree day once, okay? So the moral of the story is anything is possible, anything is probable. The most important thing is be open-minded. Have a plan, have an opinion, have a game plan like I have for tomorrow. But the key is if they start confirming the other direction, don't be a mule, don't be stubborn. Let the market tell you what's gonna happen next but at least have a course of action. Make sure you are prepared on both sides. Keep an eye on Tesla tomorrow, guys. I'm telling you, keep an eye on Tesla. All that late day buying came in uh, of the 225, 220 puts for expiration for Friday and for next week. Maybe it's something, maybe it's nothing, but if it starts confirming the bottom of that channel, maybe it gets aggressive as well. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.